thank you for praying for us and uh, for reading the word of God for us. Uh, I'm always amazed that you guys pray for us all the time when I watch you on, on YouTube. So let us pray. Lord, speak to your people and uh, ignite our hearts to seek your kingdom and to seek Jesus in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. So there is uh, this young lady in, at, uh, at church. I might step on this. Um, so this young lady has been very sick for about three months now, and uh, she's in her last studies in, in university. So she got a job. Um, it's more like a practical, to do her practicals in one of, of the firms. And uh, she started on the 1st of September. So this young lady has been so sick that uh, she doesn't have a medical aid. So one of the people in church decided, that, you know what, let me just offer to pay for her medical bills. So, but he didn't want, to, he didn't want this young lady to know. So I, I became a middleman on that uh, situation. And then I was up there. I'm like, hey, someone is offering to pay the doctor's fees for you. And she responded, is this person willing to buy me clothes instead? I do not have clothes to wear when I go to do my practicals because I've lost so much weight. I'm like, are the clothes more important than your life? I do not know how you're going to take that story, but sometimes we can get our priorities wrong. And sometimes what we prioritize is right might not be wrong. So the Jews here, in the, in the, in the passage that was read for us, they, they had their priorities wrong. Instead of prioritizing God and his kingdom, they prioritized themselves. So as, as, we, as we have seen uh, someone reading for us, it says in verse 1, in the second year of King Darius. So here we are told the date as to when Haggai prophesied. So he prophesied in the situation whereby the people of God were looking after themselves instead of looking after the work of God. So it says here, it was in the second year of this king. And uh, this king was the third Persian emperor. If you go back, you, see, you notice that the Jews were in exile for like 70 years. And in exile... Um, in Babylon, a king came up, and this king, his name was Sarias, the Persian king. And the Persian king um, won over Babylon, and he, the Persia became an empire, taking over from Babylon. And then Sarias decided that, you know what, let me make a decree and send all the Jews home. Let them go home, and then let them go and build the, church, the, the, the house of the Lord. And if you read Ezra, you'll find out that they went back to Jerusalem. As they went to Jerusalem, they started to build, but they started with an altar of the Lord. They built an altar of the Lord, and then they made sacrifices. As once they are done with that, they started to lay the foundations of the house of the Lord. As they laid the foundations, then opposition came up. Like this, there were people living in that land, and then they were called Samaritans. So the Samaritans came up against them and they were like, no, we want to be part of the work. And the Jews were like, no, you can't be part of this work. And then the Samaritans decided, you know what? Let us make their lives a, a, a living hell. So they fought against them, against the building of the house of the Lord. And then they even wrote to the emperor at that time and said, you know what? Make a decree to say this work must stop. So the emperor at that time made a decree to stop the work. And then the work stopped for almost 16 years. So when, when Haggai came in the second year of King Darius, he comes after 16 years, the work of the Lord has not been going on. So there is still foundations of the temple. So now, as he speaks, he addresses the, the leaders first. 
When we read verse 1, we are told that the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel and to Joshua. So these were the leaders. Zerubbabel was the governor and, and Joshua was the high priest. So the, the message goes to them so that they will proclaim it to the people as well. And then in verse 2 and verse 4, here's the problem. The Jews focused on themselves instead of the Lord. In verse 2 we read, This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, It is not yet the time to rebuild the house of the Lord. And then in verse 4 God asks, Is it the time for, you, for yourselves to be living in the panel houses while my house remains in a room? So, they looked at this situation. They looked at, we have got troubles from the, the, the Samaritans, and we, they're giving us hard time. It's hard to do the work of the Lord at this moment, and they, 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 they have a threat of, of going against the law of the country, because the law of the country was clear. The decree was made, stop working. So they look at this situation and all these difficulties, and they remember that when they first came out, those who came out of Babylon by the decree of Cyrus, they had it so easy. Cyrus said, you know what? Even the, the national treasures are available for your resources to build the house of the Lord. So now it's so difficult to do it. It's so hard because of the opposition that they are facing. So they make a conclusion for themselves. You know what? It is not the right time to build the house of the Lord. Let us wait. But as they waiting, and then they, as they made this conclusion that it is not the right time, so they decide, you know what, let us build our own houses. They're not getting opposition from that, so they start to build their own houses. As they build their own houses, the Lord even says that they put paneled roofs. So Life is looking good for them, but the house of the Lord is still on the foundation for 16 years. But it's not the right time to do so. So here's the lesson that they're trying to teach us. Whenever you're facing difficulty with the work of the Lord, then stop. Whenever you're facing death in doing the work of the Lord, then stop. So, it's okay to stop if, if there are difficulties, isn't it? Is that what they're teaching us here? If we want to follow their example, then on all the difficulties that you face as a church, then stop it. And, and start focusing on your own lives. So, scratch the idea of taking up your cross and following Jesus because, you know what, it's difficult. So, stop. That's the lesson that they tell us here. But that knows what the Lord is saying. They were wrong. Because as much as they were saying it's not the right time to build their own houses, they, the, the Lord's house is that they were prioritizing themselves over the Lord. We're going to see this as we continue with our verses. In verse 5 to verse 7, so we can see here that the Jews were looking after their own needs. So the main interest, it wasn't, it wasn't the difficulty in, working, in, in the work of the Lord that made them stop, but it was their hearts in prioritizing themselves and putting themselves first before God. We're going to see that even their own lives were difficult, but they still went to work, they still uh, carry on with doing uh, what is going to benefit them. Even though it was hard for them, why didn't they stop? Look at verse 5 to verse 7. Verse 5 to verse 7, uh, verse 5 and verse 7 says the same thing. It's a repetition of the same thing. Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Then verse 7 says the same thing. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. It's more like bracket, open bracket. Give careful thoughts to your ways. Close bracket. Give careful thoughts to your ways. I was never good at maths. So, but I remember one great term that I always think about when I think about maths. It's called boom dust. I don't know if you know that. 
that, that, that term. So with Pumta, it helped me a lot in maths because I knew that uh, uh, you prioritize what is on the left. B comes first, O is second, so brackets comes first. So off, then multiply, division, and then uh, addition and subtraction. So it helped me to figure out, to solve the problem. So I think here we have got a bracket thing. So, so, so if we want to see their hearts, I think we need to look at what is in between verse 5 and verse 7, and that is verse 6. So in verse 6 he said, you have planted much, but harvested lately. Well, you eat, you eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but you are not warm. You earn wages only to put it in the purse with holes. Give careful thoughts on your ways. It must, be, must have been difficult. You plant, you're working hard to, do, to plant, and then when you harvest, it's so little. Why didn't they say, it's not the right time to plant? You eat, but you do not have enough. Why didn't they say, it's not the right time to eat? You put on clothes, but you are not. Why didn't they say, it's not the right time to get clothes? Because in, in the difficulties that they were facing, they knew what, we are the priority here. We need to get on with the work. So they pri they prioritize themselves because using the same logic they saying on the Lord, why don't they apply it to themselves? So we are more important. If there's difficulties in this site, we're going to leave it. But for us, for the next 16 years, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to harvest lately, but we're going to plant the following year. We're going to go to work and we're going to get money, but it's not going to be enough, but we're going to continue to work the following year. Here are the difficulties, then stop. But no, it's all about them. It's all about them. So let's, let's just think about what, what was happening here. So here, we've got this guy who owns a piece of land and then he's buying crops to plant. So this is a businessman here. So he's buying crops and he's got workers who are coming in to plant for him as they are planting for him. And then when the harvest time comes, he's like, yo, this is so little. So the profit is not as expected. But what, what is he going to do the next year? He's going to do the same thing. But the profit is also little again. He has to pay his, his workers and he pays his workers, and then they go home with their wages. As they go home with their wages, their wages is not enough to buy all that they need. But they're going to go to work the following day. They go to the shops and they buy food, but the food is not enough. They go and get drinks, but drinks are not enough. Even the clothes that they buy are not getting them warm. They're still feeling cold. Give thoughts. Give careful attention to your thoughts, to your ways. Well, let us give them a benefit of the doubt here. They face danger of being killed, and they were against the law of the time. So, well, even though they were not making as much as they want this side, but they were not facing danger, right? Well, you are facing danger, COVID-19. Many people have died. If you want to work for the Lord, if you want to meet up with the people and, and share the gospel, you are at risk at getting COVID-19. You want to read a book, you want to pray with someone and go out with someone just so that you can minister to them or to tell them about Jesus, you are at risk coming to church like this and gather with, with, with other believers, you are at risk. But what, what are you supposed to do? To stop coming to church? To stop doing the work of the Lord because of COVID-19? Let's say you say yes. Well, you go to work. You are at risk of getting COVID-19, right? 
But there are people who have stopped coming to church but are still going to work because of COVID-19 at church. Somehow is not there in work. Kids are still going to school but they won't allow the kids to come to, the ch to church because of COVID-19. There is risk, but when it comes to our own personal lives, we are willing to face the risk. But not for the Lord. The work must stop. But we have to carry on with our lives. So, in, 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 in so doing, they are, they, are, they, are, they are not so different from us. We lack numbers in church because of that idea. People are in the malls, but not in church. Somehow, church is the safest place to get COVID-19 because the rules are, are well kept. Then in work, then in the malls, then any, any other place of work that you are at. So they were the priority, not God. And the Jews forgot that they need God's blessing in their lives. Look at verse 8 to verse 11. So the Lord here reveals to them that uh, they were not getting enough because he was against them. He wasn't blessing the work of their hands because they were not doing the, the Lord's work. So he says in verse, in verse 10, Therefore, because of you, why is he saying therefore? It's because of what he said before. What he said before is, in verse 9, you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. You brought it home, and I blew it away. Why? Declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin. While each of you is busy with his own house. So they found themselves working against God, or God working against them. It's more like being on a canoe and then you try to, to paddle against the flow of the river. So they, they go to work, but God is against them. Look at, look at verse 10. It said, Therefore, their heavens withheld their Jews, so that the rain didn't come down. They, need, they needed the rain in order for the crops to grow, but the heavens were like, nah, we're not doing that. And then even the earth was like, no, we're not going to grow these crops. Look at the, the crops, the earth is crops, it withheld its crops. And then the Lord says, I brought drought on the fields, on the, on, on the mountain. I've, brought, I've called for drought on the grain, the new wine, the oil. I've called for drought on the people and the livestock and all the labor of your hands. So they're going nowhere here. They're worse than what... Than, 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 than they, where they started. So as, as Haggai reveals all of these to them, in verses 12 to 15, they, they change their ways, and then they start building the work of the Lord. So what's the lesson here? So, Well, for you, the Lord is not working against you. Let's be, be sure of that. And because we are in Christ, we are under a blessing. We can never be under a curse. The Lord will never work against you. But what's happening here? What can we take from this? The Lord will never allow us to have fulfillment and contentment in the things that are more of a priority than Him. He will never allow us to do that. Because they took a position in our souls and in our spirit. They took a position of God because now they are our idols. 
Whatever we put first, though we try and, and get it more and more of it, we will never be satisfied with it. And we will never reach fulfillment and contentment on it. We will always feel short. We will always want to do more. Because we have made it a priority. We have took, it, we have took God from his, the seat of our hearts in the throne of it. What am I trying to say? But we have removed God from the place where he belongs. And then we put things there. So those things, the Lord will make sure that they never fulfill us. If he did, then it will be a judgment. If the Lord allowed things to take a, a priority and fulfill us, then it's judgment because we'll never see the need of seeking him. So brothers and sisters, I don't know how it's going with your pursuit. Why is this thing not working properly? So I don't know what's going with your pursuits and what you're trying to achieve in your life. Probably you've put the work of God on hold because you're still trying to, to get certain things done. Like, I need to do this at the moment. I will do the work of the Lord as the time comes. Well, I want to say to you, let's just get on with the work. Let's just do the work of the Lord. Well, I'm not saying go and build a temple. We're not there. And I'm not saying I know that you guys need a, a, your own building. I'm not saying go and build a building. Uh, I know the Lord is God, probably a perfect place for you to, to get a building soon. But that's not what I'm trying to say. And that's not what the Lord, I think the Lord is calling us here today. When Jesus was walking on earth, he said, uh, next to the temple, destroy this temple and I will raise it in three days. And then John makes a comment there. He says, Jesus was talking about his body. So somehow, the, when you read 12, verse 12 to 15 of this passage, you find the Jews are, made, are building the temple. They completed the temple. In Jesus' time, when he comes, he, Jesus rejects this temple. It's like, I'm the temple. So in other words, if you want to meet with God, then come to me. I am the presence of God. The presence of God dwells in me. So if you want to see God, then I am the temple. Come to me. Well, Jesus is the new house of God. He sacrificed himself so that we can meet with God. So if, you, if you're not a believer here today, I invite you to come to the house of God, which is Jesus. Come and meet God. Come and meet God for the first time in your life. Probably you will say, no, no, it's not the right time for me to believe at the moment. I just need to sort this and this. No, it's the right time to, for you to believe. People make excuses for not coming to the Lord. He says, come as you are. It is the right time. Consider your ways. Look at, or at the way you've been living. It's not pleasing to God if you don't have Jesus. So I ask you to come. Don't be deceived and think that you can get, you, you will pass certain things before you can come to the Lord. You have to do certain things before you can come to the, it's just a deception. It is the right time. Just give your life to Jesus now. But the Bible didn't end with Jesus being the temple of, he called the believers as well the temple of God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, he says, your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other ways, God dwells in the believers. And he says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. I'm there. Not I will be there, I'm there. Look around you right now. This is the temple of God. This is where God dwells. This is where God is. This is where the word of God is preached. This is where God has his rule and authority. It's you. So, when people want to meet God, they have to come to you. Or you have to go to them. In this way, the temple goes to the people so that the people will meet God. Do you see yourself as a temple of the Lord? 
Do you see yourself? Do you, do you believe? Do you really believe in your heart that God dwells in you? And God wants the world to know him through you. And there is no other way the Lord chose that he will build his church through you. We're not asking you to build the church. Jesus said he is going to build his own church. Jesus is building his own church, but he's using us to do that. When Peter confessed that Jesus is the son of God, Jesus said to him, on this rock I will build my church. So on this faith that Jesus is the son of God, no, or Jesus is Christ, on this faith I will build my church. So that's all we're trying to get people to, to confess that Jesus is Lord. And when they do, then Jesus is building his church. We, the, only, the only work that you are required to do is to witness. Go. I told them to go and get, and get the, 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 the wood. Go and get the people. What is stopping you? from that. Yeah, should have brought my iPad. This thing is not working properly. <laughs> so as a believer, let me try and motivate you to, to really put God first, to really put his kingdom first, to really put the, the work of the Lord first. Let me remind you of the things that you might forget while you're trying to pursue your own home, as we're trying to pursue our own house, that we might forget, is that we have got a heavenly house in heaven for us, an eternal house, an eternal home for us. It costed Jesus his life. Our earthly homes do not cost him a thing. Only the home in heaven costed him his life. So if he is able to give us a home like that, that costed him his life, how much more will he give us our homes? How much more will he provide us with our homes and houses? Well, probably you're thinking, I need to, to, to acquire as much as I can for food and save up money and all those things. He says, do not worry about your life, but seek first the kingdom of God. It says, in heaven there will be no hunger, no thirst. It's for you, it's for us. Purchase it with your own life. How much more, if it can sustain us for eternity, how much more in this temporal life? So just trust him. Stop worrying and just trust him. This, this um, I think the most people who are most challenged about trying and, and, and to hold the work of the Lord and focus on themselves is the young adult. Because I just got married and I just need to work on my marriage. I just got this house. I need to renovate and do this. I just got kids and the moment they grow up and then they are, uh, they, they are out, then I can start to work for the Lord. I've got this business that I'm running. There's so much stress in it. The moment the stress is, it becomes less, then I can start to do the work for the Lord. I've got so much going on at work right now, and the moment it goes down, and the, then I can start to do the work for the Lord. No. This will never end. That will never end. It's a deception if you think that you have to, to start, um, uh, you have to, to get those things done before you come and do the work of the Lord. It's a deception. It's now, the time is now to do the work of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have chosen us, weak vessels, to build your church. We pray that you do build your church through us, and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.